you know, the bigger the breast, the better, right? I mean, I'm definitely a boob girl, so not, not for chickens, but, you know, in another sense. Hi, I'm Erica Nakamura. I'm Jocelyn Guess. And we're butchers. So today we're gonna show you a couple different ways to cut apart a chicken. Your standard boneless, skinless chicken breast, we'll spatchcock a bird, and then we'll glove bone a chicken. It's kind of like changing your own tire or changing your own oil. You're gonna have an easier time in the kitchen. Right. So basically, when you go to a butcher shop or a grocery store, if you get a chicken whole, that'll be your most bang for your buck. The easiest way to break apart a chicken, in my estimation, is I like to start with the legs. So you can see this tension in the skin right here, right? So I like to just separate that fat right there. So now you can see that your legs are already coming off. So then I like to flip it over. But what you wanna do is when you have your thighs like this, right? Like you can see the oyster right there, which is the best part of the chicken, everyone knows. To get the legs off, I like to put my thumbs just below these oysters. So put your thumbs there and pop the legs back. You wanna pull the legs toward you and you can see where the oysters end. So I like to take my knife and just cut right above there. Cause you wanna make sure those stay on the thigh if possible. And also if you get, if you get legs in a grocery store, they might cut right through the oyster, uh, which is America's greatest tragedy. So I like to then cut right in between the oyster. So this is where you're gonna get that first quarter. So you pull it back toward you. You see the top of the leg bone, right? The femur. Your oyster's here, and you wanna scoop, scoop it right out. So you don't have to cut very hard, you just kinda get your knife under there, you're pulling as you're cutting. And then when you get down here to the, the hip socket, you can see your cartilage and a couple of tendons. So you just wanna pop, pop. And then I like to just pull it the rest of the way off. So that's your first quarter. So same thing on this side. Just pop those tendons and then give it a little Good. yank. You can take the wings off. As I'm pulling it, you can see this tension right here, so that's where you wanna just mm -hmm. get yep. your knife in. And then you just wanna cut through those tendons. You see how the bone's right there? Pop it right off. So the next part, which is probably the part that takes the most finesse, is taking out the wishbone. So you basically just wanna put the very, very top of your knife in there. Outline just the outside of the wishbone. So you see this line right here, right? Put your knife completely perpendicularly down uh, with your cutting board and you'll hit the rib cage. So you're not gonna screw anything up. You don't have to be scared. And then bring it straight back down the other side. So you can just use the very top of your knife and roll this guy right off. One, so same idea. So I think the tip here is that the breast actually has a thing called a tender, right? Which is kind of like the filet of Chicken the breast, tender, right? as it Chicken were. Chicken tender. So that part of it is actually separate from the breast and it lays underneath it. So that's kind of why Jocelyn was holding it and kind of tweezing the breast together as, as she was making that cut so that they don't completely come apart. So that's where the joint is, so same idea, just feel for it and cut straight down. But yeah, that's it. So it's a totally. pretty easy, straightforward way to break a whole chicken into parts. Spatchcocking. What's important about spatchcocking is that it is your cheater way to roasting a chicken faster. Regular roast is what, like, 45 minutes to an hour yeah. at 450. When you spatchcock a bird, you can get it done in 25 minutes. So if you're like in a And pinch, a more like reliably crispy skin, I think. Totally. Spatchcocking is when you actually take the bird and you butterfly it, essentially, right? So it means that we're gonna remove the whole spinal column right here, and we'll take out also the keel bone, which is a breastplate, and it'll lay flat and it'll make it a lot easier to handle. You're gonna get crispier skin because you'll cook it breast side down first and get like the breast super crispy. Then you'll flip it, toss it in the oven, it's done, super fast. So I like to stand it up like this. I'm gonna go on either side of the spine and I'm gonna go like literally, so you can hear me like going through like one, two, three, right? Like 
the ribs right there. So what I've done is I've come down on both sides up until the top of the oyster. So then I'm gonna hold the knife like this, it's called the pistol grip. Um, I get a little more stability this way and I'm gonna use just the tip of my knife and I'm gonna trace the outline. You see where the oyster is? Just come boop, boop, just like that. So you can kind of scoop your oysters out. Because again, that's the best part, right? We love it. So this is kind of like the opposite entry to like what you did earlier, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of scoop under the ball socket. The thing I want to do next is to find the uh, wishbone. No more bones there. Now the last thing, you want to find the cartilage that is at the very, very top of the, the sternum, right? So I'm gonna take my knife and just score it. Just straight down to where the bone is. Then you're gonna, not with a lot of force, but just with some leverage, you're gonna pop it like that. See? Super simple, right? So it's good up until now. Here's the tricky part, is that this bone is gonna pop right out as long as I don't disturb this delicate membrane underneath it. So what you do is you take your fingers, don't use your knife or anything like that. <laughs> Super simple, you're gonna run your finger, look, just along the side like this. And then I'm just like slowly, gently working it and it pops out, nice and clean. You can do almost all the cooking on the skin side down and like really, really get it crispy, golden brown, then you're gonna flip it, toss it in the oven. You're probably looking at really like 375 in the oven for like 15 minutes or so. And all this is gonna be like super fucking crispy. So, it's good stuff. So next, we are going to do some advanced chicken work. Uh, we're gonna glove bone the bird, which basically is uh, taking all the bones out you should really only do it for people you love very much for yourself because it is a pain in the ass. So we're gonna start by taking the wishbone out. Put your knife just at the top and just very oh, gently yeah. pop it. Pull it out and then if you wanna keep a jar of wishbones, if you have a child in your life, push it up and it'll kind of clean itself. So then, you know, mm -hmm. you can make a wish. So next you wanna go along that rib cage uh, like we were before. The key to think about here the most is just not severing the skin. Cause if you do that, then there's really no point in doing this, I think. You should just give up. Like poking a hole in a bag. Right, exactly. And you're like, just give up. That's so sad. Well, cause otherwise it's like if you stuff it and there's a hole in the skin, everything's just gonna kind of splooge out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this is like your little like wrapping paper. So we're just kind of like slowly making our way through the chicken. So I'll come to this joint right here, right? Like at the armpit. And I'll sever that joint. Like you can see kind of where your joint is right there. So once you get that severed, see then you can push the bird down more, right? So then same rule applies. You wanna, especially on this one, always cut toward the bone. This way you definitely won't mess up the chicken. Or your finger, right? Sure. Then... So now I feel like I've gotten pretty far on that end. So I'm gonna keep coming on the spine. I'm pulling the skin up and cutting toward the bone so that I don't go through that skin. So now when you get here, when you like get to that oyster, you can kind of turn around and uh, go up the, the butt, as it were. <laughs> uh, so you wanna start with the breasts right here, right? So what I did was I just very shallow cut just underneath that cartilage. Ideally, a reverse spatchcock situation, because like instead of pulling that bone out, you're pulling the meat off the bone, yeah. if that makes sense. So now that that's done, you wanna come back to where the tail is, and same idea, pull the meat, see where your bones are, see where the tension is, and that's where you wanna cut. So I think a good rule of thumb is don't like get one side entirely done first, but go like tip for tat. If you go every other, then you'll have a better shot at not fucking it up. More an exercise in like 
dedication than anything else. Um, but if you just keep pulling it and oh keep kind of like following what it says, you'll pull the whole thing out. Next, what I like to do is debone the legs. We're gonna try this, which is breaking the ankle right there. I feel like that scraping motion is like awesome. Someone once told me that the sound of scraping when it comes to butchery is like the sound of saving money. Love you. See, so that's where I broke it, which is rather barbaric, but. So now you can kind of cut. It's like a tube sock. We'll just debone the arm the same way. So now, you've got this like floppy friend, right? And then roast it, you could just slice yeah, it. that's what I was just, yeah. So it would just be like rounds, right? Like you could do like, almost like a porchetta or something, but in a chicken and then get like crispy skin. That'd be really good actually. So look, check it out. So you can actually, like, that was like the deboned uh, breast meat and also thigh meat from earlier. And then you can kind of literally, like, lay it in there. Yeah, you can grind that and season it or hand chop it or whatever. You totally, to like making it, it this, some sort of a sausage. Yeah. He just looks at it. Right? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Epic bondage chicken. So this is just a whole glove bone chicken. So all the bones, with the exception of the wings and the ankles, have been removed. So you can cook it boneless, stuff it with whatever you want, and then just slice it right up. So today we went from a whole bird into classic cuts like boneless, skinless chicken breast, yep. and thighs, and drums, and wings. And then Erica spatchcocked a bird, yep. which is basically a fancy word for butterflying to make it cook faster. And then we also glove bone the bird. And I think these are all great ways to save money, right? Yep. And that way you know exactly what you're getting, you can do it yourself, you have a lot more control. Thanks for watching. We hope yeah. you use this stuff at home. It's helpful. And if you screw up, just put an herb rub on it so no one can see your mistakes. <laughs>